Hey, Margie here. Did you ever feel just tight, like something's pulling? You know, you just or have knots in your muscles and you just don't have your flexibility. Well, it could be your fascia. And this can have major negative effects on really your whole health, your bones, as well as your mood. Well, the good news is there's a lot that can be done. And I'm excited because today we're going to talk about how you can use essential oils to improve the fascia. And our special guest is Jody Sternoff Cohn. And Jody's a best selling author, award winning journalist, and functional practitioner and founder of Vibrant Blue Oils, where she has combined her training in nutritional therapy and aromatherapy to create unique proprietary blends of organic and wild crafted essential oils. She has helped over 50,000 clients heal from brain related challenges, including anxiety, insomnia, and autoimmunity. For the past 10 years, she has lectured at wellness centers, conferences, and corporations on brain health, essential oils, stress, stress, and detoxification. And she has been seen in the New York Times, Wellness Mama, Elephant Journal, and numerous publications. Her website is visited by over 300,000 natural health seekers every year. And she has rapidly become one of the top resources for essential oil education on the internet today. And Jody's been on the podcast before talking about how you can use essential oils for your bones, healing, as well as reducing stress. But recently she created this new formula that can actually help the fascia. And I thought this was so interesting and a lot of people suffer from, from these issues. So I wanted her to share this with us today. And in today's talk, we do talk how you can use it, why it could help and lots of great information. So stay tuned. Welcome, Jody, to the podcast. I always love being with you, and it's always so much fun. And I'm excited what you're going to share with everybody because I think this is really special. Thank you. Oh my God. Well, you know I adore you. Oh well, thanks. So, yeah, Jody and I know each other for quite a while now. <laughs> I know we're New York yeah. girls at heart. <laughs> so today we're talking about fascia because Jody's created something really amazing. But I think, you know, we're going to talk about how we can use actually essential oils to improve the fascia. But I think let's, let's get back. I like to start before we even get into fascia, what it is. Well, let's start what it is. But then I really want you to tell well, how you got, I just thought it was so interesting how you got into creating this blend and why you did. So why don't you talk about, you know, fascia first? Because not everybody knows exactly what it is. Yeah, fascia is really the scaffolding that holds everything together in your body. And it's the communication system. It's connected to the energy system. It's the emotional system. It's kind of, you know, I used to say that the vagus nerve was the most important nerve in the body that no one knows about. I actually think that fascia is the most important aspect of your health that people don't really talk about. Body workers understand it, but the general public, they just think, oh, I have plantar fasciitis, and they think that's what it is. It's really, if um, if you think of your body as kind of a communication network, if there is a block in the communication, then, you know, different organs and systems don't actually get the right message. And that's when things start to go south and go haywire. Think of, you know, the ambulance that's stuck in traffic that can't actually get to the scene of the accident. They're not going to help anybody. When there is constriction or stagnation in the fascia, messages can't get through, and that's when things start to go sideways. So the more you can kind of unravel the blockages in the fascia, the better able your body is to heal itself. You know, it's so interesting because, as you said, body work. So as a physical therapist, and I've been a physical therapist, oh gosh, for a quite a long time. And so as a physical therapist, I've been working with fascia. Oh probably 37 years, you know, a really long time. And it's so important. And so often, you know, people, let's say their posture, for example, which is a big issue, you know, people with rounded postures of all sorts of problems. Plus for your bones, it really puts you more at risk for fractures and falling because it changes your balance. But if, if the fascia is pulling you in, you can do all the exercises in the world, but you really need to address the fascia. It's sort of almost like a door and a hinge. You can't just try to open the door if the hinge isn't working. So I'm such a believer and I've just seen how miraculous working with the fascia is. And I, you know, I've seen this for so many years. So yes. Yeah, so I just think, you know, a lot of people just don't realize it's an important piece. 
So yeah, thanks for explaining that. So tell us why, you know, here you are, you have all these amazing essential oils and, you know, how did you, why did you decide you needed one for, or why did you decide on having one that helps the fascia? Well, you know, it's like you're, you're peeling the onion, like you're, you're working on your own health and you just keep trying to get to the next level. And so many people feel like, you know, we're doing everything right. Like everything that we know to do, we're doing right. And yet we're not seeing the results that we want. And so I started my life as an investigative journalist. So I'm always curious, like, what am I missing? What else is there? And uh, one of my good friends, Kelly Kennedy, lymph queen and fascia fairy, as she calls herself, was really telling me about the fascia and how, you know, one of my challenges, my personal challenges is that I tend to go to fight or flight a little easily. You know, I had a lot of trauma in my life. I lost a child in a car accident. And so my default is kind of that high stress state. And so I do everything I can think of. I have our parasympathetic blend, you know, that I put on my vagus nerve and it, it mostly helps, but I don't necessarily, I'm like, why am I not, why am I still working so hard? You know, it's kind of like, uh, I feel like I'm always treading water and that keeps me from drowning. But at some point I'd like to swim to shore and I'm like, what am I missing? And so Kelly was telling me that, you know, you kind of talked about hunching over, like think about when something stressful happens, we kind of brace for impact, right? You know, maybe we have, um, a child that is just emotional and they're on that roller coaster and, you know, they come home and they're like, <laughs> and you're like, oh my gosh, it's going to be that evening, isn't it? You know, and so you're just trying to hold on and not respond. And then whatever they, you feed them, <laughs> often it's blood sugar, they feel better, they get their homework done, they feel better, what, whatever it is. And you can relax, but you're still kind of in that turtle posture. And so fascia, you know, it, it, the vagus nerve is most accessible kind of um, behind the ear on the mastoid bone. It, it runs through the whole body, but the neck is a point where it can get either toxified or stagnant or what, whatever. And it could be that the fascia is gripping and squeezing the vagus nerve. And so it's clenching and, it, and you need to unravel that in order for the vagus nerve to unravel. So Kelly's telling me all of this and, you know, fascia is so important and yet a little bit tricky to get to. You know, there are some at-home devices, like there's that great ro roller, the melt method. You know, it's amazing to find a wonderful uh, myofascial specialist, but but they're expensive and it's tricky and it just feels hard. And so as Kelly was telling me about this, I all of a sudden realized like, wait a minute, you know, fascia is kind of close to the surface. And I know that oils are amazing at kind of dilating, expanding, moving, and also, um, you know, fascia, it's not just physical. It's the emotions get stuck there. It's mental. And that's where oils are really somewhat magic in that they can unravel all of that. And so I all of a sudden started thinking the way I formulate, it's almost like a, a download. Like I get really clear, like, oh, it needs this kind of oil and this kind of oil. And I start to almost see the picture. And so I had my notebook and I was kind of jotting down what I thought it would be. And then Kelly was there. So we were kind of talking about what oils would be good. But anyway, I formulated a blend that this is our first roller ball that we've ever had because you can now have glass roller balls, but you can just topically apply it. And so what that's doing, you know, fascia, it's usually like it takes kind of knowledge of where it is and how to move it and it's time and pressure. And that's usually what helps it like relax and release but you can put oils on that kind of mimic the time and the pressure. And all of a sudden, like, you know, if you're lucky enough to work with somebody in person, fabulous. And then you can put the oils on to maintain kind of the unraveling, or you can just put oils on yourself and kind of give yourself a little gentle, you know, fascial massage. And that helps to release things. It's just kind of another, doesn't replace obviously in-person work with a PT or someone who is really tuned into how the body should align, but it's a great at-home adjunct treatment for people who are looking to kind of keep moving in the right direction, you know, and, and also think about like, we brush our teeth twice a day, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, it, there's a maintenance component that goes into health. And this gives you an at-home tool to kind of continue to support the unraveling and the alignment. So I'm wondering if someone's doing posture exercises or things, do you recommend then beforehand putting yes. the fascia blends on, then going to yes. do 
your stretching or your yoga, whatever you're doing yes. so that you can have optimum movement with this. Well, and even, I mean, I was telling you before we started recording, my right shoulder sometimes gets really wonky, you know, and in yoga, you're doing all these opening poses and I'm like, wow, this is really tight. I've taken to bring my, uh, my fascia blend with me to yoga and I'll just roll it on. And it's more, it's so interesting. It's miraculous. It's like, you know, cleaning the windows and suddenly, you know, all the grime disappears and you're like, yeah, that works, you know? So I, I love it. You know, it's interesting because I have some issues with my feet. So I've been seeing a myofascial therapist for a long time, actually. And, and so, yeah, so when I heard about this, we got one for her <laughs> And it's great, you know, especially if, you're, if you are working with anybody, but right before treatment, it just does seem to make everything loosen up. And yeah. it's, you know, it's just a nice thing because I'm a big person into figuring out tools. So you're empowered, you know, and you yeah. don't have to run to somebody if something like, oh gosh, this feels a little tight. Um, but regardless, the fascia is so important. And I, I think what's, you said something so, what's fascinating to me in working with fascia all these years, you said memories. And memories can be held in the fascia so that when you're released, it, it, it is miraculous in that so often by having the body work or by, you know, opening the fascia up, then it's a way to release, you know, oftentimes stored unwanted memories. And it's, I've, I've oh, seen yeah. so many people really liberated, you know, things they were holding onto and then when they worked on the fascia. So this would just be another adjunct to, to help help that whole system. Well, yeah. I mean, they talk about how the issues are in the tissues and especially yeah. for women, you know, in yoga, we do all these hip opening postures, um, like pigeon pose or, you know, things. And it's hard. Most of us, you know, we, we can't do the splits where our hips are so tight. And I've heard it's because, you know, think of where your pockets are. It's kind of like we stuff that feeling like we're upset with somebody or our feelings are hurt. But as women, we're taught to be pleasers and kind and, you know, put ourselves last on the to-do list. So, oh, oh, you, you know, <laughs> I had all these plans, but suddenly you want to watch football. So, oh, okay, I guess we're watching football, you know, and you just don't let yourself feel your anger and your disappointment. So you store it. And so when you start to unravel, it's really interesting. I like to do it in yoga because I can kind of breathe through the emotions, but yeah, it doesn't make, um, I guess it, it, it's not that it, it's a little bit like, you know, drinking water, right? If I were going to drink this whole glass at once, it would be hard. But if I can take really small sips, I can get through it. So I feel like oils help you kind of chunk your emotions into manageable amounts. So, you know, you still feel them, but it's not as intense and overwhelming. You know, with, with your other oils, like the power sympathetic that I have here, it is a great tool. You know, it's something you can take with you. And yeah. if you're feeling, you know, it, I mean, I've just seen it really, really help anxiety, you know, yes. and really help, you know, if you're feeling, you're starting to feel on edge, it's just such a great way to just relax and breathe in. And as you said, there's so many ways to use it, which is, which, you know, all the well, oils, but it, yeah. Interesting, like um, the, so for any listener who doesn't know, your autonomic nervous system is designed to keep you alive. So it has kind of two gears. The survival, you know, theoretically, the lion is chasing me or it could be, I'm going to get fired if I don't get this done or uh, I'm having an altercation with somebody that I love and you allocate resources towards survival. So, you know, what keeps you alive? The energy. So you have those hormones like cortisol that give you energy. Your heartbeat kind of speeds up so that you have more blood flowing to your arms and your legs. And it routes blood away from your core, from digestion and detoxification. It also kind of keeps um, focus on the primitive part of your brain, the reptilian part that allows you to kind of fight back or flee and downregulates your executive function branch, your prefrontal cortex. And so for anyone that's ever had, um, you know, like I see this a lot with my friends who uh, are worried about some kind of cancer. They're like, you know, you... Um, you don't have cancer cells, but we need to have surgery tomorrow. And I'm always like, why tomorrow? Like, why can't you have more time to think about it? And they make decisions. They're thinking, oh my God, I could possibly die. I, I don't even have time to think about this. But um, they're kind of stuck in the, the reptilian brain. And the minute you help yourself calm down, the minute you turn on your parasympathetic nervous system and you allow blood to flow back to your 
organs of digestion and detoxification, and also your part of your brain that allows you to problem solve and think clearly and deconstruct and pause and say, well, okay, wait a minute. Like it's entirely possible that's true, but maybe I can wait a day or two and I can get a second opinion. Maybe I can do some more research. May, you know, it allows you as opposed to reacting like, oh my goodness, someone is telling me this and I'm just going to do what they say to responding. Oh, well, that's one opinion and it could be totally true, but let me take some time and gather more information. And I feel like the more, you know, anxiety tends to be like either we're so overwhelmed and paralyzed that we don't know what to do. Uh, and so we shut down or we do that kind of reacting thing. And the more we can calm that down and realize, you know, the opposite of I don't feel safe is I have choices, you know, and if, if we have choices, somehow we choose when we choose like, okay, I'm going to follow that doctor's advice or, okay, I'm going to get a second opinion. It just makes us feel more empowered. It puts us in the driver's seat and we get out of reaction and into responding and then the anxiety dissipates. Yeah. So you're right. So besides actually physically calming you down, it also gives you that time to pause so that yes. you can you can start then making decisions not based on reacting, which is which is so important. So I wanted to say something back to the fascia though, because this is my thought and people have never heard me talk about this. I really believe when your fascia is tight, it's pulling on the bones. And I think you know, if you were to fall, so for example, if there's two rubber bands, one's really tight and one is, you know, you know, one's really tight and one has a lot more flexibility in it. You know, if someone were to move or fall or pull on the bone, one can give. Where if your fascia is really tight, it's almost like a tight rubber band. And I really think you're going to get, you know, you fall, you're going to get a lot more forces on the bone. So I really believe a tight fascial system is also going to negatively impact. Again, this hasn't been studied. But it's something I've discussed with the myofascial therapist because it just makes sense. You know, when, when things, when you don't have that flexibility and you do fall, you're not going to absorb the shock because you don't have, you know, you, you don't have that fascia that's, you know, it's just so tight. So that's sort of my, my theory. Again, it hasn't no, been that's, proven. That's true. I've heard that like, if you're getting into a car accident or something, kind of go limp and relax Yeah, because the more relaxed you are, the less likely you are to hurt yourself. The other thing that's really interesting is that the fascia can also kind of constrict the diaphragm. It can constrict the organs like the liver and the gallbladder. And the one thing emotionally, like uh, we were talking before we started um, recording, like I'm I'm in a new relationship. I'm five months into dating someone and uh, being able to receive love and receive kindness, I think is the back of the heart. Like that was something, uh, you know, I obviously still struggle with, but I apply fascia on the back of my heart, like uh, almost every day. How do you day. do that? Tell us how you do that. Well, Where do you I put it. Oh, I'll show you. But I, I, this is one of the reasons that I, I've never wanted to do the roller balls because I, have to, I only have this one. I have to get the roller, roller ball. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, because it was either plastic or metal, and I didn't love the idea of oil touching that. But then we found these glass roller balls, so I'm very excited about that. But literally, uh, here I'll kind of turn. Okay. I just behind my back and just roll it on on oh, the okay all the, the way heart. in the back yeah like right yeah, approximately where your heart would be on the we have we have a heart friend too that I do on the front so anyway I'm kind of what I'm trying to do is open my heart on both sides like even you know in yoga you do all these heart opening poses that um can be challenging you know and, and feel you feel your feelings when you're doing that so I've been noticing the more um the more able I am to receive, it almost like loosens it up and it's just easier to give and, and to um, to flow. Like things that I know probably would have upset me more a year ago. You know, like I, uh, I, I took my dogs on the airplane and it took the woman like 45 minutes to check us in. I think she was new and she, she was sweet about it. But like a year ago, that would have really made me grumpy. And this time I'm like, whatever, we're fine. We have all the time in the world. You know, it just, it makes like easier to flow through when you're not reacting. No, oh, I love that. So I have an interesting question because what I always saw were people with scars and you mm -hmm. can have a scar somewhere yeah. in your body, but that be could constrict fascia. You know, a lot of people have abdominal Apparently, scars yeah. or from, yeah. you know, from C-sections even. So those scars can be pulling. So you could even have pain in your neck because of a scar in your stomach. That's how the fascia is all connected. 
So how does the oil work and how do you recommend people doing it with scar? Do, have you found it effective with scars and helping release? Yeah. Well, yes, and um, okay. it is effective and you can just apply it on the scars. I think what is the most effective is like neurotherapy, the injection of procaine into the scar. I really think that clears it. I think injecting the scar is great. Lasering the scar, um, the putting the oil on the scar, all of these things are good. And then obviously working with a, a professional like you. Yeah, no, because it's so interesting to me when people, I mean, most people don't realize that the scar could just be restricting other areas. And so, so, so you're saying it would be a good thing then if you're going to be releasing the scar, doing any work with the, with some, you know, a therapist, then to use the oil beforehand right on the scar, as well yeah, as those other areas, things you mentioned. Our mutual friend, Dr. Christine Stoffner, I think she is the expert on this and she's done, she's written about interference fields on her Eminence Health website. And that's a great resource to talk about. She really gets into how, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you think of it, it's all kind of a communication web, right? And a scar blocks the communication. So um, even things like, you know, wearing your, having a tight bra, you know, kind of impedes the ability of things to communicate from like the head down to the body. This can interfere with lymph drainage, with fascia. I mean, there's so many things that can kind of throw us out of balance. Yeah, no, I just think it's, it's just something most people still, it's gotten better. It's funny because... You know, I've heard different um, lectures and they're like, oh, in the fascia, as though it's new. It's not new. You know, anyone in physical therapy or body work, you know, has known about the fascia for so many years, but it seems now, and I'm not sure why it's so much more, you know, people are paying attention to it and realizing how, what a powerful system it is and that it can really be one of the keys to healing and just feeling so much better, getting unstuck. And yeah, it's just, um, I guess yeah, right. It it's interesting. Kelly Kennedy did a fascia summit with health means and I, I thought it was excellent. And one of the speakers, Gina Bria, she wrote the book hydrate. She was talking about how, um, fascia is kind of the energy, the plasma and the body. And it's what communicates like what, you know, with the universe, it was, it was a fascinating interview. I haven't read her book yet, but I want to, it was so good. It, it, the, fascia is, I, I think fascia is far more important than, um, you know, we've, we've remembered, I think they maybe used to understand it more, but yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I did for a couple of years, actually, I worked with head, neck and TMJ problems and yes. it was so critical to, to really do myofascial and craniosacral and, you know, that kind of, it, they need, people needed it. They really did. There were so many issues and even, you know, different, fa you know, fascia throughout the body. But I found that it, it was absolutely necessary. It wasn't even like an option for people to really get better. It was just something yeah. people truly had to deal with. And so, yeah. So I think it's just great that you created this. Now, what's in it? What are the, some of the special things that you put together that have different properties? It's so interesting because um, it's, you know, a little bit like you go to an amazing restaurant and you're like, that was so good. And they put things you would never think together. So Angelica Root, which is really good for moving emotional energy. Black pepper, which really vasodilates and helps to move um, things. Cypress, which is also good for respiratory issues. LME, which is kind of a nice harmonizer. Frankincense, um, lavender and rose and geranium, also very high frequency, kind of nice harmonizer. Vetiver, which is really, it's um, a perennial grass that has really deep roots in the earth. So whenever you're trying to do movement, with oils, I tend to like pick at least one. Frankincense is also very grounding, but oil that's kind of rooted because what that tends to do is move things downward and help with flow. Uh, Litsia cubania, which is a really nice uplifting citrus blend. Rosemary, which is also like great for vasodilation and movement. And ylang ylang, which is another harmonizing oil. So it's, I mean, in isolation or for people who sometimes people who are into oils are like that's a weird combination I'm like I know but what it's really trying to do is kind of address the mental emotional and physical aspect of fascia and help you unravel and move you know it's interesting because yes some of the ones you said are you would use those oils just to relax so you really yeah. have a nice combination of yeah. relaxation so this is not only going to just help with the fascia it's also going to help the mental emotional which is great 
Yeah. Yeah. And the goal is really, I mean, it's all related, right? You know, like the hip bones connected to the knee bone, um, you know, all the emotion, it, it's all woven together, the emotional, the physical, the mental. And so by helping to unravel the fascia, you're, you know, it, it really is like cleaning the windshield. You're allowing, you know, other things to start to fall into place and move more freely. Now, do you recommend if you have a large area, so you mentioned your shoulder was sore, someone's yeah. back is sore. And so you recommend you can put it right on the area then. So put it right on the area or another like great hack, you know, the bottom of your feet is where all the reflex points are located. And so just applying oils on the bottom of the feet, sometimes you hit all the points without even, you don't even need to know exactly what you're doing or put it in a specific spot. It's just really efficient. And the ankles also are great points for the fascia. Now, do you recommend using a carrier oil? Um, we dilute it already. You can further dilute it if you want to. Um, some of the practitioners that I work with like to combine it. You know, you can um, get that magnesium oil and they find that to be really absorbent and re relaxing. Some have really gotten into, um, Dr. Kim Traeger has been using the oil and having amazing results. And I want to interview her about all this, the acupuncture and reflux points that she uses it on. Oh. She likes the inner leg points. She likes some of the stomach points. But yeah, it's really, it's very interesting. It's very uh, versatile and you can use it in a lot of ways. Oh, that's so interesting. So if you, because those are very small points. So do you put more concentration? Do you rub it in? What, what do you do on those no. points? Um, I mean, I'll show you kind of on the arm. She just kind of missed, like, I'll, I'll actually give you a demo. Okay, great. Show us the point too, so we can learn the point. Okay, well, the the best point is kind of um, on on the legs. So I'll just, okay. oh, sorry, my dogs are a little too excited today. Uh, like, say that this is the point, what you would do. And points are always kind of indentation. Just rub a little bit and then just kind of fold it and massage it. And she also likes using meridian lines. She believes that those are really um, kind of connected to different organ systems. You know, like a lot of people in the legs, the, the bladder lines and the gallbladder lines. Sometimes um, if you're having hip pain, it's, it's really interesting where the way it's all connected. This is not something I've studied for lifetimes. I've just been listening to other people. But yeah, I'm happy to share more resources on that. Oh, that's so interesting, though. See, I haven't heard the oils used with the acupuncture um, points yeah. as well as the meridians. How interesting. Wow. That's great. Nice way. I mean, one of the uh, kind of misnomers, I believe, in um, oils, people seem to think that the easiest way to get it in, you know, obviously smelling, it goes directly to the brain. That's the easiest way to use it. People are like, oh, drink it with your water. And I'm like, eh. you yeah. <laughs> know, uh, I find that wasteful because I'm not sure that we're actually digesting it, but their thinking is if you want a systemic effect, you know, drink it and then it will go body wide. And, and they're assuming that if you put it like say on your wrist, it's only working on your wrist. It's only working local. Um, and that could be true, but what I'm trying to do is show different reflex points, like the vagus nerve application point is one of them. So Yes, you're topically applying it in a very specific area, but you're applying it on a reflex point. So it has kind of system-wide effects. So it's much more efficient instead of, you know, drinking however much you're drinking and going through it that quickly, you're just using a very small amount and yet also making it available to the whole body. Oh, yeah. No, it's, I, I just think essential oils are such a fabulous tool. I mean, I have them next to my bed. I, I, you know, it's just something that you can have in your toolbox that, that, you know, it's just a win-win situation. And then oh, me too. You know, my daughter um, is a freshman in college and she was playing club sports and sprained her ankle and had like a small fracture on her foot and was on crutches. Like three weeks later, I'm like, sweetheart, this is not, something's not right. So I came out for parents weekend and brought all the oils, including the fascia. Uh, we have one for lymph, we have one for circulation. I was basically being Dr. Mom and like <laughs> it all over her. And then the next day she needed her crutches and she's like, wow, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> That's nice when that works out, right? <laughs> exactly. And then they appreciate Dr. Mom. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, I think it, it's our teenager's job to be a um, suspect of the parents. But yes, she was grateful that now she's back in the gym and she doesn't need her crutches. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, my kids grew up body shop. You know, they wake up in their necks or mom, like they just think, you know, as a physical therapist yeah. that like this is just available all the time. <laughs>
you know, she was so funny. She's like, mom, you never really gave me normal medicine. So I didn't know that you're, you know, like, um, what was it? The, the cold remedy that makes you really tired. She's like, I didn't know I was going to fall asleep after I took it. I'm like, <laughs> so what else? Is there anything else you want to share or how people can get this oil? And, you know, okay, they can find us at Vibrant Blue Oils. And the other thing that we're going to start to do is um, we can teach people how to combine them. I do think you can use different oils together. So I'm putting a um, fascia together in a, a vagus nerve kit uh basically to help activate the parasympathetic nervous system so it'll be parasympathetic that you apply behind the earlobe and then fascia and lymph both of which kind of go in you know the neck the neck is a big bottleneck in the body because it's got a lot going on and it's kind of it gets congested so it means sometimes toxins don't drain from the brain or good things don't get in and so just teaching people how to kind of apply it on the neck um, usually in a downward motion is the way you want to do it, sides of the neck. And then the clavicle points are also um, sometimes a bottleneck. So just helping to gently massage them to things through. And so what would you use those three for? Like what, what symptoms would people have that you would say they would, they would use the three combination that you just mentioned? It could be anything. It could be um, brain fog. You know, you're just a little tired, especially in the afternoon. You wake up in the morning and you immediately need coffee. Um, you can't remember certain words in your brain or, um, you know, your, you might have any neck or head pain or, um, you know, anything kind of aging, fascia related. Uh, your, your neck is starting to get a little fat, you know, you think, oh, I have a fat neck or um, for women, you know, like suddenly you don't have a job on anymore. You're just getting jowls. All of that is kind of systematic of congestion. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so great. And the, um, yeah, it's, it's just helpful. And the nice thing about oils is you feel it. It's not like you wait three days and, you know, right away you'll, you'll notice a little bit of a difference. So anyway, Anything yeah. else before? This has just been so great. I'm so excited. I you know, love this oil. I think it's great. And I just think, you know, I think it also lets people remember about the fascia and yeah. gives them another tool to help. Because when you have pain, it's going to completely, first of all, it does increase your anxiety, just having pain itself or discomfort. But also, you know, I'm big into, for your bones, you know, really being involved in an exercise program. And that's going to make a big difference in terms of what you can do and what you can't do. So any tool to reduce pain, increase mobility, you know, reduce, release the fascial restrictions, I think is just such a wonderful addition and really can be really life-changing. So I'm grateful for you to create this and, um, you know, and all the work you do. So any last minute things before we end, this has been so helpful. The only other thing is um, one of my favorite quotes is from Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl. He talks about between the stimulus and the response, there is a space. And in that space lies our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. And so I do think that the more you can kind of unravel your reaction and get into response mode, the easier life is. And and you always, doesn't matter, you know, what's happening in the world around you, you always get to choose how you respond. And I think the more your fascia is kind of not constricted and you're able to access your parasympathetic nervous system, the easier that is. Beautifully said. Well, thank you so much, Jody, for being here. It's always a pleasure. And I just really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. It's great to see you. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Jody and now the better understanding of fascia and how you can use essential oils to really make a difference in the fascial system, which will improve your flexibility, your mood. You'll feel so much looser. There's so many, so many benefits that we talked about. The good news is Jody is offering our community a great deal. This bottle, $15, and you'll get the bottle free shipping. So I'm a big believer in don't take anyone's word for it. Try it and see how you feel. All the links will be in the show notes. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.